Hello again. We're going to continue our lectures on stoichiometry. We're going to be looking at gravimetric stoichiometry in this lecture. In your textbook, it's page 275 to 278. And by the end of this lecture, you'll be able to perform calculations using balanced chemical equations to determine the mass, volume, or concentration of a reactant or product in a reaction. And so, we had mentioned before that um, most of the time, we won't be given the number of moles uh, in a question. It's, moles can't be measured directly, they can only be measured indirectly, and so we have to be given a mass, or a volume, or a volume and a concentration in order to figure out how many moles of something we have. So in this lecture, we're going to be working with mass, and figuring out uh, if we're given a mass of one thing, how much of something else will be made in terms of mass? And so the basic steps can always be written out. It's almost always a four-step question. So step one is getting that balanced chemical equation uh, with all your states written down. And then you're going to put the information you're trying to find under the appropriate formula. Next, you're going to convert the given mass into moles. Or if it's not mass, it'll be a concentration. And then we're going to use the mole ratio, just like we did in the last lecture, to find the amount of unknown substance, either produced or, if it's a reactant, then I guess it would be needed, or used, consumed. And then we're going to convert that, that the amount of our unknown into the quantity that we're looking for. So in this case, the first example is we're going to be looking for mass. Uh, after, we'll be looking for either concentrations or volumes. So, and those are the four basic steps. So we'll take a look at an example. Uh, the first example is one that we did yesterday, but we were working with a number of moles. Now we're going to be working with mass, because most of the time, when we have, if we had a sample of malachite, that's that C, uh, Cu, OH2, uh, Cu, CO3. So that's malachite. We would never know how many moles we have just by looking at it. It would come in a mass, usually as a powder, and we could weigh the powder. And once we weighed it, we would know the mass of what we have. So here, we have one gram of malachite. So I'm going to put that underneath my malachite. And so this is the first step that we're going to do. We're just going to list. We got our chemical equation that was given to us. Now we're going to put the information from the question under our equation. So we have a mass of one gram of malachite. We're trying to find the mass of copper 2 oxide. And so the only formula that we have with mass is our molar mass formula. Molar mass is equal to mass over moles. So we're going to be using this formula to help us out find our, our mass of copper oxide and also to find out the number of moles of uh, malachite. So we're going to need our molar masses, so we're going to get those from our periodic table. And the molar mass of malachite, once we add up all of our atoms, is 221.13 grams per mole. And the molar mass of copper to oxide is 79.55 grams per mole. And so there's our first step. We have basically everything we need in terms of numbers. And now we're going to do our second step. We're going to convert the given mass into moles. So we've been given one gram of malachite. We're going to convert that into moles. So I'm going to go the number of moles. And in this case, it's CuOH. And there's more, but just a safe space. That's the only part I'm going to write down. Is equal to, we want the number of moles. That's going to be mass divided by molar mass. And so we'll have 1 gram divided by 221.13. So the number of moles will be 0 0.00452. So that's the number of moles of 
malachite that we have now. So we've done step two. The next thing we're going to do is what we did yesterday. We're going to use our mole ratio to find out the number of moles of our unknown. So we're going to find out how many moles of, of copper 2 oxide were produced. So the number of moles of copper 2 oxide is equal to the number of moles of malachite times our mole ratio. And it's mole of unknown, or sorry, moles of known. Now I'm getting it all mixed up. We'll go like this. Moles of unknown over moles of known. Okay, so it's going to be moles of CuO over the moles of CuOH2 CuCO3. So we're going to get 0 decimal 0, 0, 0.0452 times, and now our mole ratio is 2 over 1. We should have moles written beside that. There we go. So this will tell us how many moles of copper oxide, or copper 2 oxide, were produced. 0 0.0090. And of course, we're saving all of our digits in our calculator, even though we're only writing three down. Now that we've found the number of moles, we can do our last step, and that's to convert the amount of unknown into the quantity you're looking for. So we are looking for a mass of copper oxide. And now we're going to use our molar mass formula. So the mass of copper oxide is going to be molar mass times moles. The molar mass is 79.55 grams per mole. And we're going to be multiplying that by 0 decimal 0, 0, 0.009, oops, 0, 0.04. We'll just write that a little bit better. Alrighty, 0 decimal 0, 0, 0.009 moles. Of course, we're using the full value in our calculator. So times 79.55. And we get an answer of decimal 719. 4, 8, blah, blah, blah. We take a look at our question. Our question has three significant digits, so we keep three significant digits in our answer, and we can write this down a couple of ways. The mass of copper oxide is equal to 0 0.719 grams, or we could write it down as 719 milligrams, or 7.19 times 10 to the negative 1 grams. Any one of those three is acceptable. You should be able to convert uh, to any one of those three. The most likely choice on a numeric response or multiple choice for this one would probably be the one in milligrams just because we like to keep our numbers with the right number of sig digs and if we can get by using common units like grams or milligrams or kilograms then we usually do that. Okay, so we're going to try another example here. And we have, so what mass of iron 3 oxide is required to produce 100 grams of iron according to the following reaction. So, we'll start by writing down what we're being asked for, what we're given, what the mass of iron 3 oxide. That's what the, we want to know, so we'll put our question mark there. We've been given the mass of iron. And so because we're working with mass, we're, we're going to need to know our molar masses. So for the molar mass of Iron oxide is 159.7 grams per mole, and the molar mass of iron is 55.85 grams per mole. And now we can start working through our stoichiometry steps. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the number of moles of our known, 
and our known is the thing we know the most about. So we know the most about the iron solid. And I'll write my formula down just up at the top here. We know molar mass is equal to mass over moles. So the number of moles would be the mass over the molar mass. Big little m over big M. And so we're going to get 100.0 grams divided by 55.85 grams per mole. When we go through that, we're going to get 1.79 moles. We can then take that and find the number of moles of our unknown, which in this case is iron 3 oxide, and it's equal to the number of moles of iron times the moles of Fe2O3 over the moles of our iron. And again, we get these numbers from our coefficients. So we're going to get our 1.79 moles times the moles of iron according to our, or iron 3 oxide is 1. The number of moles of iron in our equation is 2, so we're going to multiply by a half, which is the same as dividing by 2, and we get 0 0.895 moles of our unknown, and now we've got to find the quantity that we're looking for. So, mass of Fe2O3 is equal to molar mass times moles. Our molar mass is 159.70 grams per mole times the number of moles, which is our 0 0.895 and we get 142.97 it's grams, we take a look at our question and we see we have four sig digs so we need four significant digits for our answer so it'll be 143.0 grams. And that's the mass of iron 2 oxide. So we'll keep going. Another example. We can also use this method to determine, the to determine other quantities such as the number of molecules that are reacted or produced. So we're going to do the same set of steps but now we're going to calculate how many molecules of something happened. And here we're going to do our butane example. So if we have 20 grams of butane, how many molecules are of carbon dioxide are produced? So we're going to first get our chemical equation. You know, butane is C4H10. It's a gas. It's being reacted with oxygen gas to produce CO2 gas and H2O. And when we balance it, we're going to end up needing, and I'm just getting this from yesterday's work, is 2, 13, 8, and 10 for our balanced chemical reaction. And we will write down what we have. So we have a mass of butane, so we have 20 grams. All we want to know how many molecules. So I'm going to use the big N, so we're looking for number of molecules. Little n means number of moles. Big N means number of molecules of carbon dioxide. So same steps, because we need, or because we're working with a mass for butane, we're going to need a molar mass as well. So the molar mass of butane is 58.14. So 58.14 grams per mole. And because we want the number of molecules, I'm just going to write down Avogadro's constant as well because we're going to need that to convert from moles into molecules. So 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and that would be, in this case, it's going to be molecules. Molecules per mole. And now we can go through, we can start doing some calculations. We're going to find the number of moles of known, so the number of moles of butane, C4, H10, 
And again, we need our molar mass formula, so I like to write it somewhere on the page just so that I can see it. Make sure I get it right. It's always grams per mole, so mass over molar mass. And so to find the number of moles, it's going to be mass over molar mass. And we get 58.14. Holy moly, I don't know where I'm going with that. The mass is 20 grams divided by 58.14 grams per mole. And so we're going to end up with 0 0.343 or 0 0.344 We'll round it for running it down, but we're going to save all the digits in our calculator. Next, we find the number of moles of our unknowns, so the number of moles of CO2. And it's going to be equal to the number of moles of C4H10 times the moles of CO2 from our equation over the moles of C4H10. And so for numbers, I'm just going to scoot up here. Our numbers are going to be uh, 0 0.344 moles times 8 over 2, or by times by 4. And we get 1.38, and this is moles. And now we're going to take that and to find the number of mol or number of molecules, so big N would be equal to our 1.38 moles times Avogadro's constant. So we're going to multiply that by 6.02 to the power of 23. And we get 8.2. Two eight, and we're only looking so we're and we're only using two sig digs, so eight point three molecules of CO two. So that would be the number of molecules of CO two produced when you burn twenty grams of butane. So uh, another example. So it's been suggested that carbon dioxide can be removed from the atmosphere by a reaction by reacting it with calcium hydroxide. The products are calcium carbonate and water. Uh, calculate the amount of carbon dioxide sequestered by three tons of calcium hydroxide, and a ton is a thousand kilograms. So first one, we the first thing we need is a chemical reaction, and so we have calcium hydroxide. and carbon dioxide. So those are our reactants. So CO2 gas plus calcium hydroxide is CaOH2. And we'll go with solid for now because they didn't tell us what state it was in, whether or not it was dissolved in water or not. The products are calcium carbonate so CaCO3 and water, H2O. And water is a liquid at room temperature. So based on this balanced chemical reaction, we need to figure out, first we've got to balance it. So we'll take a look. So we take a look and it looks like our carbons are balanced. There's one on each side. There's four oxygens on my reactant side and three, four oxygens on my product side. We got two hydrogens, two hydrogens, one calcium and one carbon on each side. So our reaction's already balanced and it's nice we don't have to put any coefficients in front. And now we'll see what we have. The products are, calculate the amount of carbon dioxide sequestered. So we want an amount, an amount in this case would be moles by three tons of calcium hydroxide so that's a mass and it's 3.0 tons which would be 
3.0 times 10 to the 6 grams. And now because we're working with mass, we're going to need a molar mass for calcium hydroxide. And the molar mass is 74.10 grams per mole. And now this one's a little bit easier. Since they didn't ask for a mass, we can skip out on one step. So we're going to find number of moles of calcium hydroxide, which is going to be mass over molar mass, because again, we're using that molar mass formula, which is going to be equal to 3.0 times 10 to the 6 grams divided by our molar mass with molar mass which is 74.10 grams it's important to always convert your units so that they're you're working in the same thing so even though they give us a measurement in tons we're going to convert it to grams to make sure we get the right uh, the right answer so 3 times 10 to the 6 divided by 74.1 grams per mole and we're going to get 40, 485, or 46, 486 grams, and now, or sorry, that's not grams, that's moles, so it's a lot of moles, and from that we're going to find the number of moles of CO2, and to do that, we're going to use our mole ratio, and because our mole ratio is 1 to 1, the number of moles is going to change. We need the right number of sig digs, which is 2. So it's going to be 4.0 times 10 to the fourth moles. So here's the homework. Uh, pages 8, or questions 8 to 15 on page 278.